with our Savior's Lutheran Church. We're so glad you are joining us this Easter season as we proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. There were many announcements in our worship slides and we invite you to check out ways to engage in ministry in the weeks and months to come with our Savior's. And a reminder that beginning the weekend of May 1st and 2nd, we are transitioning to live streamed worship. And so we're excited to be able to enter a new phase of worship with our saviors. More information can be found in our communications. But now let us begin worship in prayer. Holy God, you are the source of all life. Fill us with the words of eternal life, so that we may be witnesses to Christ's resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue worship in song. this week, I wanted to share with you something that really stuck out to me in today's gospel lesson, which is about to be read. The thing that stuck out to me was that ghosts don't eat. That seems strange. The Bible talks about ghosts. 
Yes, because in the season of Easter, we tell the stories of when Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was resurrected. And one of the things that was talked about was maybe this Jesus that they were seeing was a ghost. But the promise in today's Bible story is that ghosts don't eat. That Christ, Jesus, was alive and he proved it by eating with his disciples and in the same way the church remains alive when we share meals together it's why we have holy communion every week because it is a sign of life because when we are at the dinner table, we have conversations with our families. When we sit at the school lunch table, we have conversations with our friends. It is a sign of life. And even as we have been apart for over a year now, we have continued to eat together in communion because it is how we bear witness, how we tell the story, of how Christ is alive in and through us. And so as you eat today and throughout the next week, I invite you to think about it as a time of community, a time that we prove that we are alive in Christ because ghosts don't eat. Let's pray. Please repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for giving us food and the reminder that you eat with us and are alive in us when we share your meal too. Amen. We continue worship with a gospel reading. The reading today comes from Luke chapter 24 verses 36 through 48. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were dis disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses... The prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I begin today by sharing words of grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, church, I know that I've shared a little bit about my pre-pastor story with you before, but I want to share a part of my story with you again. So when I went to seminary in Chicago, I moved into the city and I needed a job. I had just left a bartending gig where I was bartending the summer before, and so I set out with a mission. I need to go find a job as a bartender while I live in Chicago and study to be a pastor. And I was completely unsuccessful with finding a bartending gig. I had just graduated from Valparaiso University with a theology major, music minor, and I thought I was an amateur bartender. But obviously music was still my passion and joy. And so I was getting all these rejection bar after bar. And so I decided one night, I'm like, I'm going to play hooky. I'm not going to apply. I'm just going to go and see some musicians that I really liked at a music venue that was called Martyrs. I was excited for the show, but I decided just to try it one more time. So as I was ordering a drink, I went up to the bartender and I said, hey, any chance you guys are hiring bartenders right now? They said no, but they said, we are looking for a bouncer. And he goes, you look like you could be a door guy. Would you want to do it? 
The rest is history. The next day I had an interview with them. I began my work at Martyrs as a security guard, door guy, bouncer, whatever you want to call it. And this wonderful job existed for me because I not only got paid, but I also got to hear incredible musicians, hear them tell their story and play their music. And, and I'm going to break from my sermon for a moment just to say I know we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, but I cannot wait to get back out there to support these awesome musicians and artists and support places like this that gave them a voice, a place like Martyrs. So let's talk about the name Martyrs. The, the owner of this bar, his name was Ray, he grew up Catholic, and so he knew this term martyr was someone who died in mission for their belief. And so he decided to name his bar Martyrs after musicians and artists who died before their time. Martyrs would be dedicated to the musicians and artists who gave their life for their work, music, and art. And so this whole bar, this music venue, it was covered showcasing different artists, different martyrs, from Jimi Hendrix to Miles Davis, Sid Vicious, Janis Joplin, Bob Marley, and so many other martyrs. I know that I've shared this story before about being a bouncer, um, and every time I share about martyrs, it brings me great joy and people who share with me that they've actually been there or played there. But why it's really important, believe it or not, is that this word martyr is used in today's text. That's why I brought it up. When Jesus tells his disciples, you are my witnesses, he means a whole lot more than just saying you're a witness. This Greek word that's used here for witness is martus, which is where we get the word martyr. They go together. So the actual definition that's given for martyr is to be a witness. Typically, when we use this definition, we take it to the next step to be a witness, but more than that, to be a witness who, who died on behalf of their faith and belief in Christ. You know, I think it's really cool when we can have a word be deepened like this, to hear that the word not only means a martyr who died, but someone who is a witness. They heard these words from Jesus. You are witnesses of these things. And so it makes you want to ask, what did the disciples witness? You see, the disciples, they're gathered here and, and they're just now hearing the Easter story. They're just now seeing the resurrected Christ who stands before them and says, peace be with you. Very similar to the story that we heard last week with Thomas. The first things out of Jesus' mouth as he enters these rooms are peace. And yet they are startled and terrified because honestly, they thought they were seeing a ghost. And then Jesus shows them his hands and his feet, but he goes one step further to make sure that they know they're not seeing a ghost. He says, hey, do you have anything to eat? So they give him a piece of fish and he eats broiled fish. And, and I'm playing with this here, but I don't know the official rules for ghosts, if they can or can't eat things. But it's here that Jesus eats to prove he's not a ghost, that he's real, that he's raised. And then he goes on to tell them this. He says, everything that has happened, the way that I lived, the way that I loved and served others, the way that I died, the way that I raised, this was all spoken in the scriptures. This was all said that it would happen this way. He then opens their minds to understand, it says, which I think is a really beautiful way to describe what happens anytime any of us grow in our faith or God, and God's understanding God in the world. Jesus opens their minds to understand. And then he tells them, this good news that, that he is risen the, t the task now is to proclaim this to all nations, and it begins here in Jerusalem. It begins here with you. You are to be witnesses of these things. Martyrs. The disciples, followers of Jesus as it was defined, are now going to be apostles, which means the ones who are sent out. And Jesus in his resurrection is preparing them that as you go out, you are called to be a martyr in its many meetings. These disciples, they're going to be sent out to be witnesses, to give testimony in courts, to families, to communities, to tell the story of what they have seen and experienced. 
They will live lives modeling the way of God in the world. And some of them will truly be a witness by being a martyr. Church, Christ is alive. Here we still share this good news some 2,000 years later. In church, we are still called, gifted, and blessed to be Jesus' witnesses in the world. We are called to share this story, his story, and God's story that is being told through us. We are called to model the way, the ways that he lived and loved the world. And we're called to be witnesses, to give testimony to what we have seen and heard, the story of God's love told through the resurrection of Jesus. And you know, to be honest with you, to think just for a moment of the opportunity that we live in, this challenge of a pandemic, How is it that I can live my life as a witness to the resurrection? How is it that I can connect and communicate God's love with all people, even if it looks differently than the way it was done all these years before? You know, this calling, it wasn't just something that happened 2,000 years ago to those disciples. It's still our calling to be a witness to the things that we have seen and heard. Dear people of God, I do not think our task and our calling is nearly as daunting as it was for the first apostles, some of whom truly were martyrs for the faith. But I do still think that it can be scary and intimidating and bring on anxiety when we hear that we are called to be witnesses. And so I actually want to share with you what's found in the very next verse uh, to this story. I don't know why they didn't include it, but I think it's a really important thing for us to hear. So what happens is is Jesus is talking to the disciples. He's sending them out and saying, you are going to be witnesses to these things, martyrs. But then in this last line, he says, but I'm sending you with what my father has promised, meaning the Holy Spirit. You see, church, we are Christ's witnesses, but we're not at this alone. We go out knowing that God goes with us. The Holy Spirit has called us and moves us beyond our church walls. We are called to share the good news of Christ, and we have never been alone in this work. Church, to be a martyr means to be a witness to the things that we have seen and heard, this good news that Christ is alive. And God's love has defeated death and the good news that God has a calling for each and every single one of us. We're called to not only know Jesus, but to go out into the world to make Jesus known. And so I pray that you have a blessed week as you witness to the good news that Christ is alive in our world. And may all God's people say, Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus in the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. All we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Wander and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside.
upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken, and I will build my life upon We profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with prayer. Gracious God, as we continue to celebrate Easter, we pray for your Spirit to be with us. We pray especially for those who are sick and grieving, for those who are suffering, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for your healing power, your comforting presence, your never-ending love. We pray for all those impacted by the pandemic. We continue to give thanks for vaccines and pray for continued health and improved health. We pray for those on the front lines, for doctors and nurses and teachers and administrators and police and firefighters and first responders and all those who are working to help us in the midst of this continuing challenging time. And we also pray for victims of violence and hatred and prejudice. May your Holy Spirit move through our community, through each of us, through our world, that you might give us justice and peace, that you might fill us with your grace and send us to share your grace. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the month of March, a few of our fourth grade students participated in their stepping stone focused on service. And so I want to invite you to listen to the things that they have learned and some of their ideas of service out in the world. In our fourth grade stepping stone class, we learn the importance of serving others in our daily lives. As Kristen Geo called to serve God our family, our church, and our community, and our world. Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 45, I have not come to be served, but to serve. We serve God by showing others kindness and love, giving our time and sharing Jesus. 
Our service projects ranged from cleaning up trash outside, delivering snacks to healthcare workers at the hospital, baking cookies for friends, and doing yard work. We give thanks for their hearts of service, and we continue worship with the gifts of our offerings, where we know we give of our time, talents, and treasures. We continue with the service of Holy Communion. If you have not yet done so, now is a good time to get the elements for this service, uh, bread or cracker, wine, juice, something to use for communion. And after you get that in return, we begin our service of communion in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Encourage you now to, uh, to share and receive the gift of Holy Communion. And when we return from receiving communion, we hear this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, and keep you in grace. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. We will.